Hey, what's up? Richard Bryce here. In this video, I want to share with you my number one tip for preventing injuries and kind of rehabbing injuries and being able to play tennis without pain. And this is going to be even more important if you're a little bit older like me, because tennis is hard on the body. And in order to keep your body healthy, there are certain things that you probably need to do on a regular basis. So that's what I'm going to be discussing with you today. Now, just as a little bit of background and context about my qualifications to talk on this sort of stuff, this is an area where I spent a lot of my professional career working. So when I was younger, I coached tennis for about 10 years, but I've spent a lot of time working as a trainer. And prior to becoming a full-time tennis hacker, I ran a training studio where I worked with tennis players using this neuro stuff. But I really helped a lot of people to address chronic pain issues and do concussion rehab. So what I'm going to explain to you today, uh, just understand that I've got a lot of background in this stuff, so it might not be information that you've heard in other places, but hopefully that means it's going to be really useful for you. So I hope it is. If it is, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel, you know, I deal with the coaching, the tactics, the technique, that kind of stuff, but a lot of what I talk about is how to get your body functioning better so you can stay injury free, so you can perform at a higher level. Okay, so my number one tip for preventing injuries and for kind of rehabbing stuff that's annoying you at the moment and making your body feel better on court, especially when you're older, is to do daily joint mobility exercises, to mobilize all of your joints every single day. Now, a lot of people think stretching is the best thing to do, and I'm not saying stretching is bad because stretching is useful, but if I was only gonna choose stretching or joint mobility, I would do joint mobility every single day of the week. And in fact, that's what I'm recommending to you. And I say that as someone who spent several years uh, studying stretch therapy and becoming a fascial stretch specialist, but because of the way pain works within the body, because of the way our nervous system controls things, joints are kind of a little bit more important in terms of making sure that things are working properly. So please don't think that I'm saying don't stretch. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you want to reduce your chances of injury, you want to rehab stuff, joint mobility is the way to go. Like I said in the intro, I used to run a studio where I specialized in getting people out of pain, and a lot of these people had been in pain for a long time, and they're gonna be way less healthy than you are. If you're playing tennis, you're gonna have a much better functioning body than them. And what I found is just doing full body daily mobility for these people, you know, 60, 70% of the time, that got rid of their pain. So if it worked for them, it's really gonna work well for you. I'll explain why that is in a moment, but before I do, I've made other videos that show you different uh, mobility exercises. I'm gonna place those down in the description below and it's gonna give you a set of tools that you can use and if you start to, to work on those, it's really gonna be beneficial for you. What I wanna do now is kind of explain how it works for those of you that like that sort of stuff. So the reason that mobility is so important, we've kind of got two sides to it. We've got the mechanical side, actually improving the joint health, and then we've got the neurological side. So we'll cover the mechanical side first. Um, our joints uh, have a lubrication. Uh, they've got this stuff called synovial fluid. And unless you move the joint regularly in through its full range of motion, it doesn't help to lubricate the joint enough. Uh, and it can often create a bit of uneven wear and tear. And that helps, you know, it basically speeds up the degeneration of your joints and it breaks them down faster. So by mobilizing your joints, taking them through a range of motion. So here I'm mobilizing my thumb. Here, I'm mobilizing my wrist, just taking it through a range of motion. Here, I'm mobilizing my shoulder, just taking it through a range of motion. This helps to spread synovial fluid, keep them healthy, prevent your joints kind of deteriorating too quickly. So that's the one side of it. But one of the big areas of why this is so beneficial is gonna be the effect neurologically. Your brain controls everything in your body. It controls everything you do on court. So you hit four ends back and serve. Your brain makes all that stuff happen. Well, pain is also something created by your brain. And most people think that we only get pain when we're injured, but that's not the case. The research is very clear on this. I don't want to pull up a, a bunch of research articles. You can kind of search for that on your own. But pain is a protective mechanism created by your brain in response to perceived danger. One really big thing that can cause your brain to want to try and protect you and create pain is not receiving information from your joints. Because we've got all these different joints. And one of the, the key areas that I work with tennis players initially, and there's a link in the description that's gonna show you how to do this, is making sure all the joints in your feet move. Because you're running, you're doing all this stuff on the tennis court, 
the joints in your feet are meant to send information back to your brain and that's how your brain knows what to do. If those joints don't move properly, your brain is going, oh no, what is going on here? Why am I not receiving information from my feet when I'm running around a tennis court for 15 hours a week? That's really scary for your brain, so it might create pain just to try and protect you. So mobilizing all of your joints on a regular basis is really important just to make sure stuff doesn't hurt. And that's why, like I said, when I used to give this to people with real pain issues, often it would help them get rid of all their problems. So I'm sure it would be very beneficial for you. The last thing I really want to say on this is there's something called the arthrokinetic reflex. So it's kind of what I've just described. But if a joint doesn't move because your brain doesn't like it, it can basically hold muscles tight and weak and stiff to try and protect you. So it basically tries to splint the area. And because of that, if muscles are tight and weak and stiff and they're held there neurologically, your chances of actually getting an injury increase. That's why I said it's just so important for injury prevention as well. Because obviously if you step out on court and things are shut down and your hamstrings aren't firing properly, you're more likely to injure your hamstring. So just making sure your joints are moving is really going to help to prevent that. And hopefully what you're, you're starting to understand by extension that if you are stiff and inflexible a lot of the time tight hamstrings or tight groins or tight whatever are just protective mechanisms created by your brain because joints aren't moving properly so that's why I said if I'm going to choose either mobility or I'm going to choose stretching I'm always going to choose mobility because if you just stretch your hamstrings over and over again your hamstrings are tight for a reason so you're kind of going against your brain's wishes. That's why they just tighten up again the next day, which you may or may not have experienced. Okay, so hopefully all this makes sense. Uh, mobilize your joints every day. Uh, I'll place links down in the description that's going to show you how to do some of this stuff. Uh, but if you want more detail and more help in this area, I'll place another link uh, that's going to allow you to schedule a chat with me and we can talk and see if there's a potential to work together if you've kind of got things that you, you would like help with. Okay, hope you found this video helpful. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Uh, any questions or comments, leave them down below.